Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Haringey in North London to Tottenham. This ride takes under 20 minutes, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport, you can expect the same journey to take over half an hour, so you can save time by cycling. If you find this video useful, or you just enjoy watching it, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel, as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well, you can find the link in the description below the video. All right, let's get going. So we're starting on Green Lanes, near Haringey Green Lanes Overground Station, and we're gonna head straight down Stanhope Gardens. Green Lanes itself is a horrible street to cycle on and it doesn't have any cycle lanes or cycle infrastructure at all, but we can bypass it by going on these quiet streets that will allow us to run more or less parallel. The reason these roads are all quiet is because Warwick Gardens, which is the next street that we're about to turn onto in a second, is close to motor traffic at the end, and as a result there isn't actually a through route through these residential streets. The result is a nice quiet cycle route heading northeast from here, but as you can see from the guys walking in the road, there are also other benefits in terms of just general traffic calming for everybody using the street. Haringey Council does have plans to put proper cycle lanes on green lanes, and I hope they go ahead because they can't come soon enough. This is a good alternative route for the way we're going, but it doesn't work so well if you're heading northwest rather than northeast. Here we cross St Anne's Road and there isn't really a crossing facility so you just have to look both ways and find a gap in the traffic. And then we take ourselves onto Rich's Road. This area is part of Haringey's St Anne's low traffic neighbourhood which was put in a couple of months ago and has made all the roads around here quite quiet. The route we'll be taking through here is quite windy and could be difficult to remember so you could download the map or you could just remember it this way. We've just turned right and now we'll be turning left and the next turn will be a right, and the turn after that will be a left, and then a right, and then a left. So it really just goes right, left, right, left, right, left, just like you're marching. Coming up briefly here is a street that you may have actually seen in the news. It's called Black Boy Lane. The council is actually considering changing the name of the street as it's considered to be inappropriate. The current thinking is that it would be changed to Larose Lane after John Larose, who was the man who set up the first Caribbean publisher in the UK. You can see on these streets that although they're nice and quiet, they're not completely free of traffic. So we just went past a delivery van because deliveries can still access by taking a different route through the streets. And of course, there was somebody accessing their own home there and driving out. So you will run into the occasional car, as in all low traffic neighborhoods, but generally, it's a really improved cycling experience around here, I think. At the end of this street, we need to cross West Green Road, which is a main road. And I actually think that the treatment here could be improved a bit. There's a zebra crossing a few meters to the left of the mouth of this street. And if you moved it just a little bit to the right, so it met up here, you could make it a joint cycles and zebra crossing. And then we could use it to get from the LTN to cross into Downhills Park just here. That's a really useful, traffic-free, safe cycle route, so it would make sense to link those two things up. As it is, you just have to wait for a gap in the traffic and then cross. Hopefully, someone will be using the zebra crossing on foot and traffic will be stopping for them. When you get to the entrance to Downhills Park, you're actually confronted with two paths and you should take the left entrance, which is the one that we're on here. This is a nice, wide and well-surfaced path but do make sure that you watch out for pedestrians as of course it is a shared space and so you shouldn't go too quickly and you should give everybody plenty of space when you go past them. The history of this park is quite interesting. It used to be a stately home and then it was bought by a big developer called British Land and it was going to be turned into houses. Um, but there was actually a campaign by locals to save the area as green space and in 1901 it was bought by Tottenham District Council and turned into a park. Now, there's a number of different ways you could go here. You could actually go right on this road here as it's through a new low traffic neighborhood and there is a cycle route towards Tottenham, but we're gonna stick in Lordship Recreation Ground for now as it's entirely traffic free. And there's also something here that I want to show you. As you're cycling on this path though, do make sure you watch out for the hazard, which is marked by a sign and also a quite dangerous speed bump, which is this bit of water across the track. So don't go too quickly over that. 
There are a few different ways you can ride through this park, but we're actually going to take the second right just here. And that's going to lead us onto something really interesting. It's the Lordship Recreation Ground model traffic area. You can see that the paths around here are laid out like little roads with zebra crossings and give way lines. And this actually dates back to 1938 and it was open to teach children how to cycle. So if you've got kids, you could take them here and teach them how to ride around these roads. Even if you don't though, it's still worth popping around to have a look as it's one of those little things that makes London really interesting. There's another really interesting thing in this park as well, and that's the little river that we're about to ride across in a second. That's called the River Moselle, and it's actually a tributary of the River Lee. Now, this river was actually buried in a culvert under the recreation ground until 2012, but a major refurbishment of the wreck saw it brought above ground, and we're just gone over it now, and it feeds the lovely little lake in the park as well. It's a really rare example of one of London's buried rivers being unburied and I'd love to see that happen more because they're a really interesting geographical feature of the city which we kind of lost touch with. Now we're going to exit the park onto Freedom Road which, which turns quickly into Adams Road and the way you know which way to go is it's the exit past the Broadwater Farm Community Centre. Unfortunately someone was parking in the build out here so it was actually impossible for us to get past and I had to dismount. You shouldn't really run into too much traffic on these streets though, as there isn't a through route here, and it's also part of another new Haringey low traffic neighbourhood called Bruce Grove West Green, which is a really large LTN which removes through traffic from a really massive area to the west of Tottenham High Road. If you want to see more cycle routes that have been enabled by that scheme, check out my Wood Green to Seven Sisters video, and I also have more content on the way about that LTN as it enables a lot of cycling routes. Now this bit's a bit complicated, make sure you don't miss the path on the left here, which interestingly contraflows up the side of the parked cars. I really don't like this design at all, it's uh, quite an old piece of infrastructure, and there are a couple of these in Haringey done like that. I guess the highways department back in the 90s or 80s or whenever just decided to do things like that. But it's really not great and you need to keep an eye on the doors of the parked cars to make sure that no one's going to open one in your face. We're currently riding still in the Bruce Grove West Green low traffic neighbourhood and as you can see the traffic levels are incredibly low and it really does link up other places. We're also on the official TFL cycle route called Cycle Super Highway 1, which is the signposted route, and you can tell that by the CS1 symbols on the ground. Now, we want to use this crossing here and see this protected island, which you can use to wait for a gap, and then turn straight into Church Lane. Now, this street was actually blocked by a large lorry when I got here, and I was initially annoyed, but then I took a closer look, and it seemed like they were actually towing one of the cars that was illegally parked. So, actually, you know, fair enough, they're doing great work. Despite being part of Cycle Superhighway 1, Church Lane is not actually filtered. There is actually a through route through here for cars, including that one that's coming past me quite quickly just there. And if you think about it for a second, that guy's going to have a lot of problems when he gets to the very, very narrow stretch of road that we had to squeeze past the lorry at, as is this SUV, which is using it as a cut through. I think it would make a lot of sense to install a single traffic filter here, maybe with an exemption for the same permits that give people access to the doctor's bays, the parking bays that we went past where a car was being towed because I think those bays say doctors only and they're for a nearby medical centre so other people aren't supposed to park in them, which I suspect is why somebody was being towed. But adding a filter in would go some way to improving this cycle route, which really cars have no business using as a through route as it is so narrow when you go past there. There is of course a filter just here, but it's a little bit too late located to make a difference. Now, this was a Tottenham Hotspur match day, so some of the streets around here are closed, but it doesn't actually make a difference to our route. We turn here onto Brereton Road, and we follow it around until it meets Tottenham High Road. And you can see there Tottenham Hotspur Stadium looming at the end of this street. So I think it's fair to say that I've got you to Tottenham. As I say, this road closure is temporary for crowd management for the game so I'm just going to dismount here and walk down the pavement to get onto the high road but normally you just be able to cycle down there. Incidentally the high road you can see is actually traffic free due to the game. It's normally a very busy road 
And yeah, so you could see from the map that we took a pretty direct route. It was uh, quite nice. And I think you'll agree from the video that it was a pleasant ride as well. And that's really been enabled by those two new low traffic neighbourhoods, the Bruce Grove West Green one and St Anne's, as well as that closure just off green lanes that we used right at the beginning. So great work from Harringay and I really hope that they push ahead with those LTNs as they're really making a big difference to cycling around the borough for local trips just like this as well as maybe longer distance commuting journeys. All right, thanks very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed that, make sure you hit the like button so other people can find the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you really, really like what we're doing here, do consider chucking us a couple of quid on the Patreon. Thanks very much, and I'll see you again next time.